So arm powered laptops of the future. This is what I've been saying for 10 years, actually for 15 years. I've been talking about this since the one laptop per child in 2005 and the, the Arcus PMA 400, which was using a keyboard and Wi-Fi and all the apps. That was in 2004. But uh, now Apple is making sure that all the tech reporters and journalists, they're all understanding that the arm power laptop is the future of productivity, is the future of laptops, is the future of desktops also. With the M1, M1 is really, really cool. It's really nice and powerful and five nanometers and wow, that's really nice. You can watch all these videos on YouTube, people showing off uh, video editing which is what I do mostly, uh, why, why I think I need a powerful computer is because I edit my videos, all my videos are in 4K since 2016 actually. And uh, in the last couple of years, I've been using Panasonic um, GH5 and G9 to publish in 4K60. All my videos are in 4K60, but this is really hard, if not nearly impossible to edit on an Intel x86. The only way I've been able to do that is using Shadow on the cloud. So for $15 a month, I can get an, an Intel Xeon with a GTX 1080, 50, only $15 per month. And then I have a cloud computer that's fast enough to edit 4K60, but it still lags. I have to do proxy files on everything. But the M1, thanks to you know the world of ARM where you can optimize in the SSC and use the encoder decoder part of the SSC, uh, in Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve, and soon enough in Adobe Premiere and probably a bunch of other video editors, there's smooth 4K60 hardware acceleration while you edit and rendering super fast. So that's what's really cool. Um, but you know, uh, Qualcomm is doing, I've been doing for the last three, four years. Actually, they've been talking about this for more than 10 years. In 2009 at Computex, I saw Qualcomm powered ARM laptops, they were running even Ubuntu. And you can check, I have a playlist down here. You can check all my ARM powered laptop videos since 2008, all the way back. I've posted over 150 ARM powered laptops. So of course, it's uh, fantastic to see the M1 and to see all the marketing, you know, Apple is a marketing company. They're really pushing, I'm just trying to come back and focus. Yeah, they're really pushing, this is Panasonic. They, they sometimes they get out of focus. Um, hopefully they'll fix that with a GH6. Um, that should hopefully come at some point and be cheap, much cheaper than the, the, the Sony A7S3. Um, so Qualcomm have been talking about this and it's amazing and they're doing very good work with, the, with Microsoft, but now hopefully they'll get a boost and they will start supporting video editors. You know, like there's a lot of apps that are not even native ARM yet on this. I can't even run Chrome browser uh, without emulation on Windows on ARM. You know, so um, hopefully we'll get Chrome browser. Hopefully we'll get the Office suite like Microsoft haven't, as far as I know, the Office suite isn't even ARM native yet. I mean, how crazy is that? Is Windows 10 on ARM and you can't even get Office uh, uh, ARM native as far as I know, but maybe I'm wrong. But then there's all these video editors, you know, like this chip, which is the Snapdragon 850 and they have the 8CX and the 8CX Gen 2. Uh, they all have 4K 60 video encoding and decoding on the SOC. So I think they should be able to, you know, like unlock a, a platform. So the, the developers of these apps should be able to support native smooth video editing on even on these. And, and Qualcomm is talking about $300 uh, Snapdragon laptops coming very, very soon. Actually, there is a, a Snapdragon Chromebook coming, uh, Snapdragon 7C Chromebook coming at $399, the Acer Spin 513. I think this definitely gonna be $300 Snapdragon. This one was 399 in 2016. This is my Samsung Chromebook Plus. I still think it's one of the best laptops in the world and it's been unbreakable until recently where I dropped it a little bit too much and it's been a little bit like um, uh, not as smooth anymore in the thing and the, what do you call it, the hinge. And it seems a little bit too complicated to get it fixed. <coughs> but this was 399 four years ago, okay? And see how smooth it is. It actually has 400 nit, I mean nearly 400 nit, uh, 2400 by 1600 display. So it's nearly the same kind of uh, um, 
4 by 3 or I forget the aspect ratio that are on the MacBooks. So the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. So those, this was two and a half, three times cheaper than the, the M1 Air four years ago. Of course, it's not as powerful. This is a Rockchip 3399. But Rockchip is talking about a new chip. Hopefully, they'll get back into the, the Chromebook space with this 3588, which is hopefully coming soon. And some new ARM cores are even optimized for laptops. Um, I think it's called the uh, um, um, 78C or something like that. So um, this is exciting. Uh, another thing now you can consider is uh, if you are in the market for buying an M1 uh, MacBook and you're in the US, please click. And if you're buying them on Amazon, please use the link here below. So uh, then if like 20 of you do that, then you know I get a MacBook and then I can test it out. Uh, because um, uh, or if you buy anything else on Amazon this Christmas in the US, please use the link below. Even if it goes to the M1 MacBook, you can just browse around the Amazon website and then I get the commissions. That would be great. And uh, right now I'm going to show you um, the latest video from Jeannie. She just sent me uh, the adapter that she has for the Mac Mini. And this uh, dock provides a 10 gigabit uh, dock with a bunch of ports, SD card slot, even a you know, 10 gigabit speed SSD SATA slot in there. So you can add external storage to your M1 MacBook. Because as far as I understand, you don't need to buy more than the minimum spec entry level M1 MacBooks. They're all just fine. You don't need more RAM. Uh, you know, ARM optimized apps don't need more RAM. That's how ARM works. Um, eventually, maybe there will be stuff, but you know, I don't see any need to get more than eight gigabytes of RAM right now with, uh, for example, video editing should be plain enough. I don't see any performance increase in getting the 16 gigabyte RAM. So I recommend just get the eight gigabytes and just get 256 gigabyte of minimum SSD. And then if you want to expand storage, use external storage. You can just use a USB hard drive. Maybe that even performs the same, even if it's a hard drive, you know, uh, even though it's only 100 and 150 megabyte per second, if you get a hard drive, but if you get an SSD, you can go up to 2000 megabyte per second with the new SanDisk. Uh, I've seen a YouTuber show that he can render video on the external SSD even faster than the internal on the M1 MacBook, even though the M1 MacBook um, and a mini uh, SSD is super fast this external 2000 megabyte per second might even actually you know somehow interact faster with the apps and everything because maybe the internal ssd is good at running all the apps and stuff like that and then the the, the files the storage and stuff it's maybe it's better to use the external bandwidth pipeline to get your files in so you can get two terabytes for the price of a 256 gigabytes on apple upgrade you can get two terabytes for 299 dollars also check it out in the link below if you want to consider that. Um, I don't know if it's uh, um, how the performance is if you edit off a hard drive. Maybe it could be okay as long as you output it on the internal SSD. So that should be enough. Okay, so check out Jeannie's video right here. And she has a whole bunch of other dongles also for the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. Right now she has them at 10 gigabit per second, as far as I understand. So it's like a USB 3.1 kind of bandwidth. Um, but hopefully she'll be able to upgrade this stuff to get the Thunderbolt to USB 4, 40 megabit per second. That would be really cool to get some dongles with this kind of speed. <coughs> Maybe you can write in the comments if you know some dongles that do 40 gigabit per second. Um, some docks that can dongles. Maybe there will be some. Hopefully Genie is looking into getting a chipset that can support that because then you can maybe even have a dual uh, type C dongle that would maybe output the whole 80 gigabit per second to whatever happens in the dongle or in the dock. That's maybe something can be considered. Thanks for watching. Hello, this is Jean Pen from Colory. Uh, we are professional type C hub manufacturer. So you know we uh, we released the, the MC25 last year for the Mac Mini for the silver gray color. And we know uh, a few days ago, Apple released the 
new Mac Mini with M M1 chipset. So this is the silver, silver one. So we uh, we know the new Mac Mini with M1 chipset only comes with silver color. So today we release the new MC25 with silver color. So you see this is very beautiful and elegant. It is perfect to match your Mac Mini. So it is the same color and the same uh, same, 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 same shape. shape. So you can see in the back there is Type C in. So here it comes with two USB 3.0 and the two USB 2.0 and the SD card reader, micro SD card reader. Indeed, you know uh, people don't have uh, so much storage space for the Mac Mini, so we designed the hard disk slot for the for the Mac Mini. So it will set up port here, so you can put your hard disk inside. Mm. So now the silver color is available on our AliExpress shop. So you can uh, you can visit our AliExpress shop below the video to buy it. Or if you, we also are planning to design the new uh, premium version for the for this model with maybe with higher uh, features uh, to the Mac Mini. So if you have any idea or good idea, you can share with us. You can welcome to send us the email. So we also uh, want to show because to show we are the first one to design their patent. So this is our patent. You see. Uh, this is the Chinese uh, Chinese intelligence uh, post office. So here you see this is the design and this is the date. It is last year April. So thank you for your support and we are happy to know people like our design and like our products. Thank you. Hello, who are you? Hi, I'm uh, Charbax. Hi. Hi. Uh, who are you? I'm Jenny from Connery. What's, uh, what's happening? What's up? Uh, we are doing very good. In this year, we have a three times three time screw up in 2018-19. So uh, we shipped a lot of Type-C hubs and the USB hub, USB adapters in this year. And also your family uh, grow 33%. Yeah, yeah, we, I have a new baby in this yeah. year. What is Colory? Uh, we are the professional Type C hub factory in the world, in, in Shenzhen. For example, when people go on Amazon, many times they see your Type C. Yes. This is your factory right now. Yeah. Everybody's on a dinner break, no? Yeah. It's for dinner. Your factory is running 24 hours a day, no? No, no, no. But many hours? Yes, many hours and uh, very busy. Very busy, and um, so how is the business? Good. We have a we have a good business in this year. We have a three times grow up uh, than last year. So three hundred percent growth in the company. Also, your family is growing. Two hundred percent. Two hundred percent bigger, yeah. and your family also thirty yeah. Yeah, percent yeah. bigger. I have a new baby in this year. Thank you, Nicholas. Cool. Um, so. So this, this is your is, this is the latest best seller. This is the best seller of this year for the Type C hub for iPad Pro. So you know, uh, Apple released iOS, iPad OS in this year. So iPad OS support mouse, support keyboard, and support uh, edit the files on the on the iPad. So that means your iPad can become your second computer. So that, but iPad only comes with one USB Type uh, Type C port. So that means you need more ports for more production ability. You have a nice design the way you you make it yes. dark, right? Yes, this is our paint and design. We designed this the um, uh, magnet clip, so you can remove or you can hold it. So when you put on the on the iPad, it's very stable to hold your so Type C ports and not hurt your iPad. Nice. So it, it comes with type uh, HDMI and the two USB here, and the uh, fast charging and the earphone jack. Nice. So uh, slowly behind uh, slowly. some of the employees are coming back. Yes. And uh, big big volume. 
Yeah. Yeah, sales very good on Amazon and uh, other China, like China. So people can just search Type C Hub, maybe it's you? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, also Microsoft also released Surface Pro 7 in this year, so it comes with one Type C and uh, USB here. So we also designed this for the Surface Pro 7. And you connect to both? Does, do you use both? Yes, yes. So that means you can use the full speed of two connectors yeah. to do more types, uh, yeah. like uh, stuff yeah, around more, here? Two USB here and the card reader and the HDMI and the fast charging here. Nice. So you have specific product for specific very successful yeah, yeah. devices? Yeah. And we also introduced uh, our patent uh, Type C hub for Mac Mini also in Hong Kong Fair. You can check. Uh, uh, yeah, people the can check the Hong Kong Fair video. Nice. Yeah. Um, cool. So, what's next? More and more. Yeah, more and more, more and more new products in next year. Thank you, Nicholas. Thank, thank you for our customers. So, what do you want people to do now? People who are very interested, um, like a distributor. Just contact you yes, directly? Yes, just contact us directly because we also keep stock for our uh, Type C hubs. We also can ship small orders with very fast delivery. How small? I can buy 12? Mm, yeah, 12. You can buy one piece, it's fine. One piece? Yeah. Cool. Or you can buy uh, 50,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 50 pieces, 100 pieces, fine. And 50,000, how fast do you deliver? Uh, one week, in one week. Really? Yes. So many? Yeah. And stable? Yes. All this is like 100% perfect? Yes, yes. All right. And do you have uh, stuff with the 4K60, uh, USB 3 yeah. bandwidth, yeah, yeah, yeah. fast SD card? You, what, what's yeah. the specs? We, we, have a, we have a 4K60 Hz uh, for, for, for the iPad Pro and for MacBook. And you also do f full bandwidth of USB 3, fast transfer rates? Yes, yes. Nice, and also fast SD card rates. Yeah, 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 yeah. we're doing, because many, uh, many Apple users, they are, have cameras, they need a faster uh, data transfer. So we are doing the faster SD card reader. And how fast is the power delivery? How uh, high can the power go? Uh, right now we max support uh, 60 watt. 60 watt. Yes. But maybe in the future there could be 100. 100 yes. Et Actually, it's support 100. But in this specification, we always see we always say 60. So officially, is 60. Yes, official 60. But we actually we support 100. Okay. Hello. Hello, Nicholas. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Charbax. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm I'm uh, Charbax. Char and who are you? Let, let me ask. Let me ask. Who are you? Okay. Yeah. You just did. Yeah. Okay, so, so. Uh, no, no, no. Let's restart again. Restart, restart. Let's restart. Hello, who are you? Hi, I'm uh, Charbex, and and uh, who are you? I'm Jenny from Calorie. <laughs> how, how is it going? Fine. We are we are doing good. At the 2019, we have a three times group, group uh, three times groups. Uh, 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 sorry, three times grew up, right? Yeah. Three times grew up. And also. Uh, no, no, no. We we do again. We we try. Okay. No, 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 no. Hi. Who are you? I'm Charbax. Hi. And Hi. who are you? I'm Ginny from Calorie. All right. We're gonna do a video now. Can I hear your sound check? How it sounds when you're speaking. Hello. Nice. Hello. Good volume. All right. 